I have no motivation. <sighs> Please excuse the fact that I'm a bit sniffly today. I have really bad hay fever or allergies or whatever you want to call it. Self-discipline and motivation. What are they? How do they fuel us? How do they make us better people? All of the what, whys, hows and whatever else you want to ask about them. So first up, what does it mean to be self-disciplined and what even is motivation? Self-discipline is the ability to control our actions and what we're doing in order to achieve a goal we want to achieve, obviously. <laughs> Self-discipline is all about being able to do things even when you've got distractions and obstacles in your way that could potentially lead you to just giving up and not carrying on. Motivation, on the other hand, is the driving force to get those things done, the why, the passion, the, the fuel to creating or doing something and fulfilling that goal. Motivation probably helps with self-discipline a little bit because it gives us reason and purpose to carry on with the things we need to do. I believe without motivation, self-discipline is very, very difficult. In my opinion, becoming more self-disciplined and more motivated is a bit like walking a tightrope. You need balance, you need focus, and you need patience. You're not gonna suddenly start walking a tightrope across the Grand Canyon. You're obviously gonna start on a little slack line in your back garden. But you know what none of these things involve? Luck. Personally, in my opinion, I don't believe luck exists in most circumstances. Don't get me wrong, I do believe that some people are born into a family with more money or with loving parents or, you know, won the life lottery a little bit. I do believe there are certain times when you're in the right place at the right time and the wrong place and the wrong time. But as a general rule, I don't believe that luck exists. In this household, we never say, you are so lucky because. So for instance, if someone can play the guitar, you shouldn't say, you're so lucky you can play the guitar because you're sort of diminishing how many hundreds and hundreds of hours someone has put into that. Instead, you should go, wow, that must have taken you a long time, you're so talented. In my opinion, most of the time, success and achievements are a result of hard work, perseverance and determination. What I love about the fact that it's not innate, it's not this thing that we're just given and that's it, we, you know, we're given our lot, that's fine, is that it can be worked on and you can change and you can be more self-disciplined, you can be more motivated and you could be more lucky if you believe that that is something that exists. Something I learned about recently is a little something called self-fulfilling prophecy. If you tell yourself you are something, you quite often become that thing. If you tell yourself you are a really unlucky person, you never get any opportunities, you never do X, Y, and Z, then chances are you will never do X, Y, and Z because you're telling yourself. In fact, Darren Brown, who is an incredible illusionist and stoic thinker, uh, has an incredible social experiment on this where he finds somebody who considers themselves to be really, really lucky and someone who considers themselves to be really, really unlucky. The person that considers themselves to be really unlucky, they spend some time putting things in place that could potentially make him feel lucky, but he ignores all of those signs. So for instance, somebody drops 50 pounds right in front of him and he doesn't even notice and when he looks back at the footage, he says that he just didn't look for the opportunities because he always feels so unlucky. If you shift this mindset and use the self-fulfilling prophecy to actually better yourself, then you can become self-disciplined and self-motivated and a lucky person if you choose to be. If you're telling yourself, I never win anything, chances are you'll never enter anything either. If you think, I won't win this writing contest because I'm not a very good writer, you won't enter and therefore obviously you won't win. Whereas if you tell yourself, I am a good writer, I can enter this competition and I might not win, but entering means I have a higher, 100% higher chance of winning than not entering, so I'm gonna enter. To me, self-fulfilling prophecies are great. I went from being quite a negative person possibly and a bit grumpy and a bit 
to being quite positive and upbeat and telling myself I am a positive person and I can do things. I think a lot of negative self-fulfilling prophecies obviously come from upbringing and they come from a negative self-image and they obviously have to be worked at and sometimes we need help along the way so with therapy and with you know talking to a licensed professional but I do think we can sort of chip away at these negative self-beliefs and use self-fulfilling prophecy to make us more self-disciplined and more motivated. I have a few things that have helped me become more of a self-disciplined and self-motivated person but it hasn't come naturally. I am not innately disciplined or motivated or anything like that. I have had to work at it really hard and I haven't done it on my own. I have had an incredible teacher along the way with me and it's really, really helped to shape who I am now. My first piece of advice on becoming self-disciplined is to have a clear goal in mind. If you don't have a clear goal, it can be very easy to kind of drift through life and just accept your lot, how it is, and you know, it is rubbish or it is boring or you know, whatever. If you find something that you actually wanna do, like if you wanna write a book, you have a clear goal and a clear focus, that can help you be self-motivated to achieve that. Another thing that has helped me massively is developing healthy habits and routines. One that is my ultimate favorite recently is not checking my phone until 9 a.m. 9 a.m. is when I would typically sit down to work and be looking at screens anyway, so that is when I start to open up and be a bit more social. Before then, I have probably about two hours, two and a half hours to just do something that is disconnected from the world and has no expectations. I have started getting up and making breakfast, whatever breakfast I might want, and reading for a bit with a highlighter and properly absorbing the information, as well as having a chance to properly enjoy a cup of tea and pottering in our small garden for a little while. These routines and things don't have to be a massive shift, like you don't have to get up at 4am or something ridiculous to be more productive. You can just maybe say, I'm going to set an hour a day to something I want to do. If you want to write a book, you might say, I'm going to spend an hour either researching or writing or, you know, finding things that make you feel inspired, even if that's going and sitting in a coffee shop for an hour. Those things are all productive and part of a self-disciplined journey because you are doing something that you know is for a bigger goal and a bigger picture. And I do think in turn, this will help you with motivation too. I think knowing that people aren't just these innate beings that things happen to and some people have it good and some people have it bad is really, really valid. Obviously, obviously, it goes without saying that sometimes bad things happen to people and there is nothing you can do about it. No amount of happy thinking and happy thoughts or meditation or yoga or The Secret or whatever that book was called is going to help you because unfortunately life can be cruel and nasty things happen to people. But I do believe when it comes to things like goals and things we want to achieve, most of the time, the only thing stepping in our way is ourselves. And I think since I've noticed that, I have been a lot more productive and I've been a lot more centered into what I want to achieve and what I want my life to look like. But it is important that finding self-discipline and motivation is a journey and it can be a long one. And it is important to just keep chiseling away at it if you can. I think something that really helped me was stopping blaming everyone else for the things that weren't going my way. I really, really felt like I was almost owed something and that's not true. We're, we're not owed anything. We are lucky to be on this planet and I love that. I love that we can make progress towards our goals and I really hope this video helps you in some way and I look forward to hearing from you in the comments to see how you find self-motivation and self-discipline. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new, welcome. My name's Becca. Please do subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Have a lovely day, have a lovely life. Bye. End of credits fam. My battery is nearly dead again because I, you know, didn't charge it for long enough, but thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the comments. Please mention if you are End of Credits fan because I love it. It feels like a little community or a little secret club that we've got.